Hey there, Hannah here with my good bud, Erica Greg. Oh, hat, I'm hat. Hit yes, you. hat Hannah. Yeah, so listen, Erica and I just um, did a presentation at Hambryville Law at the firm. Um, we've been working on it for a couple months. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. guess at this point. Working hard. And um, it, it's a dolly theme, so like plot runner, um, whenever, someday we can share more about that with y'all. But that's why I have a hat where you can't see, we have our boots. Concho or, earrings, turquoise. Yeah. The whole vibe. Dolly Parton vibe. And afterwards, we're sort of debriefing of things that we wanted to adjust about the presentation. We have intention to bring this presentation to other family law firms and, you know, industries where people are working on the front lines. We're talking about coping strategies and when in our jobs, when we are dealing with really intense situations, sometimes <clears throat> Crisis, crisis, crises. That's how you say it. That crises. is. That's how I say it. Okay, crises. Um, how do we respond? How do we respond to the person going through that? How do we respond to take care of ourselves? So it's sort of like the gist of the presentation. Anyway, we're debriefing like, oh, so we've got notes, like how we want to reorder. It's going to be even better. Yes. Reorder some of the slides and some of the things. And I, uh, we were sitting here visiting and we were talking about those, some of those moments that have happened in life that really change life. Anyway, we're talking about in particular counseling moments. And Erica said, oh yeah, well, my monumental counseling moment. I was like, oh, that is so good. I didn't ever think to call it a thing. I got ideas. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? We should get on and share um, this with people, our monumental counseling moment. I mean, um, mental health therapy for my, for myself. I'll just share this about me. Like, I'm so fortunate. I don't, as um, by nature, struggle with mental health issues. Like, I don't experience tons of anxiety or depression or things like this. Okay. So I know I'm so lucky and so fortunate in that way. And my experience in mental health treatment came up for me when I was in law school and very first starting to consider divorce. So it's people like me versus Erica, not exactly um, in the same camp. No. I mean, for me, I have a very long mental health story that started when I was very young um, that involves a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. And I've been in recovery or sober for 14 years. So I definitely wrestled with very serious mental health issues. But we both have these moments in our lives where we were in therapy or with a counselor that a therapist said something to us and it just totally changed the trajectory of our thinking in our lives. And so we wanted to share with y'all what that was what that moment was for each of us. Yeah, very different, um, very different contexts, but similar notion. And oh my gosh, I would love if you're watching um, and can share your monumental Ooh, therapy yes. moment, I would love, or if you're watching this later, if you could post and share. Um, I think also it could just bring people to awareness of how much can happen. But anyway, okay, so I was in law school at St. Mary's and I had never gone to a mental health counselor, but I found myself like starting to say things like, you know, I don't really know if I'm okay. I don't I don't really think I'm doing so good and somebody did suggest to me like you should go and talk to a counselor because at St. Mary's when you're in law school and probably this is true at most like universities period you can go get free mental health care yeah. while um, you're in school and so I went and saw Deidre over in Raba at St. Mary's and I remember sitting there and, and was just like, I guess talking about I wasn't happy in my marriage and just my life circumstances and things were so hard. And she just looked at me and she said, Hannah, you deserve to have a happy life. And then we just sat there. And I swear the thought had not occurred to me. Like, in my mind, I thought, like, it's always going to be hard. I'm always going to have to work really hard. Things are always just going to be tough. Think, this is not a fairy tale. You know, all of those things that we tell ourselves to sort of, I don't know, adjust to things that or don't. justify yep. continuing on status quo. Yep, with the status quo. You deserve to have a happy life. Mm -hmm. and, and that moment really was the very first breakthrough moment of, like, hey, Things could be different. Things could be better. And from there, I mean, a lot of other things happened after that, but <laughs> it was the thing that got me started um, in thinking about my divorce journey that led me to the point that I'm giving a presentation in a divorce law firm today. So, I mean, who would have known? Yeah. And for me, my middle, and that's such a wonderful, beautiful moment. And it is, we all have these things that just profoundly change us. That seems so obvious. It's like, of course.
deserve to have a happy life. But um, for me, my mom. I, maybe we're still here. I don't okay. know. I don't know what happened. My if phone alarm's here. going off. <laughs> you got the best one, but here's mine. So for me, I mean, anxiety is a very, very large part of my mental health journey. And it is such a barrier for me and was just really like debilitating for me for so long. And, and really until I got deep, deep, deep into therapy. But for me, my mental health moment or that counseling moment that just changed the trajectory for me was... Um, cause I catastrophize. That's what I do. I mean, I can go from nothing's going to happen to, oh my gosh, you know, the, an asteroid's heading for the planet earth. Everybody run, um, in about half a second. And I remember a therapist, you know, saying to me, not don't think about, don't cat, don't catastrophize. Don't think about bad things. You yeah, know, why don't she, you try another way? Yes. But she said, okay, so catastrophize, think about all that can go wrong. But also if you're going to do that, and she totally like knew me because I'm a lawyer and she knew I was justice driven and all of that and fairness driven. She was like, wouldn't it be also fair to you to consider that things could actually be okay? And I was like, hmm. And I actually have a coffee mug that says it might be fine because I have to remind myself. And it's, I loved that, that someone said, sure, you can hold space for the catastrophizing. You know, don't waste time trying to just exclude that because it's going to be there but you also got to nurture that it might be okay and that's really neutralized my thinking it's helped me like when i do catastrophize not get mad at myself for like tapping into that but now i can go to because of this one therapist now i can also say all right well then i'm also going to entertain what could go right yeah and our mental health providers out there like may you take a little heart that some of the things you say in those sessions made truly like that one sentence, the fact that you felt led to say it and you did stop to say it can change or be an impetus for change in a person's life forever. I know that was true of me. I got to find you, Deidre. If anybody knows Deidre at St. Mary's, please like get me in contact with her. We're sending Deidre hearts. Yes, hearts to Deidre. So, <laughs> oh, look. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we made a heart. I don't know. Mine's not making a heart. If Mine it's gonna is. Do it, I, I got a better heart. You've got the better one. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. And Erica, if y'all don't know her, follow her on all the things. Erica Griggs, she's an amazing mental health um, counselor here in Austin, and the firm partners with her in supporting our team. Um, and we're so grateful we got to do this. I'm today. grateful for you too. Mm, big hug. Bye, y'all.